Did you know that not all the energy in the foods that we give to our animals actually get absorbed? So why is this? Well, it actually has something to do with the way our animals digest the food and the way they utilize this energy. So that's why in this video, we'll be looking at energy digestibility and how that plays a role in our uh, animal's growth and how we can manage that. So there's four different categories that we can talk about when discussing the amount of energy available for our animals. So we'll start at the top. Imagine you have a bag of food or feed for uh, say your livestock. The total amount of energy in that is called our gross energy. So that's all the energy, everything in that food. So from here, the animal will eat it. It gets, um, goes into their stomach the some of the energy will get absorbed but then some will still remain in the plant matter and will be passed out uh, in feces and for a uh, ruminating animal it'll get um burped out as methane so right here we have uh so our total amount of energy or gross energy we lose some through uh, feces and methane so this energy is a loss to the system so uh, gross energy minus the energy in the feces and methane is equal to our digestible energy. So this is the energy uh, that the uh, animal actually extracts from the food. So before we move on, it's important to understand that there's still energy uh, in the plant matter or food matter that's uh, turned into the feces. And so that's mainly because uh, the animal doesn't have, um, I guess, the functions to extract that energy. But this is good, I guess, in a way, because these feces then go, uh, it turns into animal manure, and then that uh, manure is then used for our soil. So it's one big, I guess, system. What's not, the energy that's uh, not used here will then be used um, uh, for our microbes. So now we have digestible energy. And so from here, uh, we get our, I guess, um, metabolic reactions. But as part of our metabolic reactions, we also get waste product. So a lot of this waste product is actually removed in our urine or animal's urine. So there's still energy in this. Um, and so that's why we get a loss of energy uh, when urine is removed. And so it's this energy after the urine is, uh, the energy in urine is removed that we can actually, I guess, use um, for functions. Now, it took me a while to understand the difference between gross energy and digestible energy. And what I got caught up with is, why is there a difference between the energy in the feces of methane? Why is that separate to the energy in urine? Well, the reason uh, because of this is that the way animals digest their uh, food is different to how they remove waste through urine. So what happens is, waste is actually removed from within the body through urine. Now, it's a bit different to what you'd think, but feces and everything, I guess, that goes in your body is still technically almost on the outside of your body. And because of that, the energy actually absorbed into the body will still have uh, waste products once different reactions occur. And so this is passed out through urine. Whereas uh, feces, that's just energy that couldn't be absorbed. So it's a very important note to understand the difference um, between gross energy and digestible energy and why there's a uh, difference between the energy lost in feces and the energy lost in urine. So for example, when nutrients is absorbed by the small intestines, it then enters the bloodstream and it is transported around the body. So it will go into a cell. That cell will then uh, use the energy uh, within that uh, nutrient. So say it's a, a carbohydrate, it will use um, that for energy production. So then a byproduct of that reaction could be urine. So then what happens is that urine then uh, goes out of the cell. So it's, it's uh, removed from the cell, then enters the bloodstream. The bloodstream will then pass that through the kidneys. The kidneys will extract all the waste or the urine, and then that will then go into the bladder where it will then be removed. So removing a waste um, via uh, feces and by urine is actually two almost separate um, systems and so that's why we have um, two different uh, energy categories to describe the energy also the digestible energy is all the energy that's actually absorbed by the animal so if we only included gross energy we wouldn't be factoring in how much energy that the animal could absorb and so we get uh, digestible energy minus uh, the energy in urine and we get left with metabolizable energy 
So what metabolizable energy is, is the actual, uh, the amount of energy that is uh, produced from metabolic reactions. Now there's only one problem with metabolic reactions is that they produce heat and heat is a form of energy. And so uh, heat is removed and uh, it's a loss to the system. So once we remove the energy of heat from our metabolizable energy, we get left with our net energy. So this is the energy that, can, uh, that animals can actually use for uh, production, maintenance and growth. So we want as much net energy that we can get from our gross energy. So it's important to understand these different uh, categories of energy because it allows us to understand um, these different terms. So if someone's referring to energy as gross energy, but you're thinking it's say metabolizable energy, then there's going to be a discrepancy in what you're talking about. So say on a, uh, a feed label, it might have gross energy, um, but you're comparing it to say a feed label that has net energy. Well, obviously the net energy is going to be lower than your gross energy. And so it's really important to understand um, how these different uh, energies affect our animals because otherwise we're going to be comparing apples to oranges. So another really important uh, thing to note is that there's a whole range of factors that affect the conversion from gross energy to net energy. Now some of these uh, factors include uh, so the age of our animals, uh, the sex, the health, if it's had any disease in the past, disease can set animals back. It could even be uh, the quality of the feed, the quantity of the feed. It could be uh, if the animal's pregnant or not. This will all play a massive role in how much energy is converted from the gross energy to our net. And so we really want a, a high conversion so we can have as much net energy for these maintenance and production um, of our animals. Because at the end of the day, we want as much growth that we can get out of our animals so that uh, we can have a high yield and sell for a greater amount of profit. So when I was studying this, I thought of a good way to remember uh, the difference between gross and net energy is that, say, imagine you have um, a net, right? And you put all this gross stuff in. So the gross stuff's gonna include, you know, all the, all the uh, food matter, but it's also gonna include your feces and your methane, right? It's all gross, it's pretty gross, you don't wanna, um, you don't really wanna use it. But you put it into your net and all the gross stuff is going to go away and the net stuff, everything in the net is going to be um, almost the good stuff. So everything that is gross, it's gonna be, say, gross energy, and everything that's in the net, net energy. So just to recap, we have our um, energy in the food. This is our gross energy. The energy that is absorbed is going to be our digestible energy. The energy available for metabolic reactions is our metabolizable energy. And finally, the energy available for maintenance, production, and growth is our net energy. We want to have as much net energy um, as we can. And we can do that by improving um, different characteristics of our animals. Also um, genetic potential, that's a massive one that I didn't uh, include before. But we wanna do this so that we can increase the conversion rate so we can get as much out of our food. Um, so we're saving costs, I guess, on our food and increasing as much energy for growth uh, and development. Thanks very much for watching. If you like this video, check out some of our other videos. We have uh, some others on animal production, uh, plant production, and we even have a series on regenerative agriculture. I believe regenerative agriculture will be um, a massive part moving forward for agriculture as a whole. So I encourage you to check it out uh, and be one of those first movers. Thanks again. My name is Teal Simmons, and this is Agriculture Explained.